Well, hello everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. How's everybody doing? I missed y'all while I was in Mexico, but man, was Mexico amazing. And I'll be going back to Mexico um, next month. So looking forward to that and staying at a different property. But what have you all done? Any Anything we can celebrate? Did anybody lock in that um, fireball? Because, you know, the end of the qualification period was Sunday, um, July 9th at midnight. Did anybody secure any of the awards at a minimum, the fireball? Anybody? Anybody? Nobody secured it? <sighs> okay. All right. I secured it because I'm leading from the front, right? Speed of the leader is the speed of the team. Well, if you didn't secure a fireball, here's what I want you to go after. The 100K pin. So in order to get the 100K pin, you have to have four ITAs by the end of July. Can y'all do that? Who's going for it? Just type in the chat, you going for it. Everybody should be going for the 100K pin. Welcome, Beverly. Welcome. Natasha. Hey, Zara. Hey, Martina. Welcome, welcome. Okay, good. That's what I'm talking about. You got to have a competitive spirit if you want to win, right? Welcome, Benita. Absolutely. So I want everybody to go for that 100K pin, all right? Okay, so today's topic, I hope you have your pen and notebook ready because you already know note takers are money makers, right, Beverly? We got to take those notes and bring them to life. Um, but today the topic is eight differences between entrepreneurs and employees. Eight differences between entrepreneurs and employees. Now, being an entrepreneur, hold on one second. Let me... Let me do, oh, won't well, let me do that. Okay. Y'all, you know, as you get older, these eyes, <laughs> I think I might want to pull my notes up from my phone because uh, these eyeballs, mm-mm. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to pull it up from here and we're going to make this screen live. All right, hold on one second, y'all. Let me get my screen together. There we go. There we go. All right, now we're back. Now I can see. Okay, so eight differences between entrepreneurs and employees. Being an entrepreneur is all about mindset. So are you an entrepreneur or an employee? Let's find out. All right, so number one, entrepreneurs improve their skills. Employees improve their weaknesses. Mm, I'm gonna repeat that. Entrepreneurs improve their skills. Employees improve their weaknesses. If you've ever been on a job interview, you've probably answered this question. What have you done to improve your weaknesses? This is a sensible question to an employee. After all, employees are taught that weaknesses are bad and that they should be improved, not entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs view focusing on weaknesses as futile. Instead, they draw on their strengths. Who wants, who wants to um, talk about that? Did that hit somebody a little different? Entrepreneurs focus on their strengths. Employees focus on their weaknesses. Any comments on that? Go ahead, Beverly. Yeah, I do. I have some comments on that. And um, uh, thank you for that, um, Director Burke. So uh, within the team, we're identifying the strengths of each of the team members, or uh, ones who are stepping up as leaders. And because we, we see our strengths are totally different. So now 
where I can focus on my strength, somebody else's strength is also complimenting me and vice versa. So that's like six of us on the team and that we have different strengths. So now we have a pool of strength and that is really moving us along. And like you say, in corporate America, it was always about, you got to prove all these, your weaknesses. Here I'm being taught to focus on where I'm strong and bring that to the table. And I tell you that has leveled up my confidence as well. So that's, that's powerful right there. Very powerful. That's good. That's good. The other thing is, I remember um, being at a meeting and Mr. Bradley said, you know, he he's not great at public speaking. So what does he do? He recruits people who are better at public speaking than he is, right? So it just makes his team stronger, right? Some of you might not be good at creating flyers, but you might have someone on your team that is the bomb.com at creating flyers, right? So you have them do that. Or you may be really, really good at creating posts, right? You might you might know how to finesse the words and create a post to attract people, whereas your business partner may not, but guess what? They can leverage where you're strong, right? We all take each other's posts and at some point we tweak it, modify it, and we make it our own, right? But if you don't you don't have to be amazing at you know doing posts, you get to leverage other people's strengths. So I think that is very, very important. Let's go to number two. Number two, entrepreneurs may produce lousy work. Employees are perfectionists. I'm going to repeat that. Entrepreneurs may produce lousy work. Employees are perfectionists. Employees constantly under the watchful eyes of their bosses strive for perfectionism. After all, nobody wants a black mark on that all important performance review right yet entrepreneurs thrive on lousy work because putting out lousy work means that at least they're producing and it's better to create and fail than to not have created at all so when i first read this i was like what lousy work but if you read the book fail fail your way forward right you're going to make some mistakes and you cannot bring that perfection mindset to your business because you're not going to be perfect at it and so if you're scared to fail then you're not going to produce anything in business so it's better to just just go for it mess it up it's okay we always say that that first time will be the worst time Write that down if you're taking notes. The first time will be the worst time. And so what do you what happens as an entrepreneur when you do something and you mess it up the first time? I promise you, you won't do that same bad thing again. And what did you do? You learned what not to do. So it may not have come out the way you wanted it to, but at least you did something, right? Same thing with like, for example, doing a presentation, right? You practice, 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 and then that first time you do it, you know, your tongue gets tied, you almost bite your tongue, you know, you might drool or spit or something, anything can happen, right? You say the wrong thing, you call Mr. Bradley, you know, uh, James Ferrara and vice versa. I don't know, you mess it up. It's okay, but you did it. And I promise you the next time you do the presentation, you won't make those same mistakes. But what you have to do, you have to have the mindset of, I'm going to fail my way forward. So it's not so much, oh, I'm gonna put out lousy work, right? I would kind of tweak that, but it may not be your best work, but at least you did something, right? Instead of not doing anything. Anybody wanna speak on that? Who can relate, Stephanie? She like, where that unmute button? Okay, here I am. Do you hear me? <laughs> yes. Yes. That's the way forward. I believe in that. I believe in failing forward to success. So the more you fail, the better you become because you get to sharpen your skills. Exactly. So that's good for me. Exactly. Anybody have an aha moment? You've been trying to be perfect at this. And so it's 
you've been non-productive, right? Some people haven't piqued interest yet because they're afraid somebody somebody's going to say no. Guess what? That's part of the work. You're going to get a lot. Matter of fact, if you haven't gotten a thousand no's, you ain't working hard enough. It just, it is what it is. Anybody else want to speak on this? Failing your way forward? Anybody have learned that lesson? Go ahead, Rochelle. Yeah, I have learned because I used to uh, mess up a lot on the three ways. And I had, you know, a lot of the directors would say, well, one of the main would say, you know, um, make sure you learn the presentation. Not presentation, but kind of just learn to. I used to kind of put them first, and then it was a mess. But then I started to uh, learn how to follow the steps and pretty much go back to the app until I got it. You know, so that was much more better at three ways. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Devorah said, ouch. Devorah, why you say ouch? It's all about failing your way forward. You got to mess it up. You got to be bad before you can be good. You got to be good before you can be great, right? You got to do it. You got to try the thing that you know you're going to mess up and get it out the way. It's kind of like ripping that Band-Aid off. You know, if you try to take a Band-Aid off real slow, Versus just, just, just rip it off and do it. Just do it. As we say in Planet Marketing, feel the fear and do it anyway. Feel the fear and do it anyway. And if you're working with your coach or your mentor, you mess things up, guess what? They're going to clean it up. They're going to clean it up. I remember I was a one-star director and it was late at night. And I had a job where I had to be at work at 6 a.m. I worked 6 to 2.30. And so I used to be in bed by like 9, 9 the latest. I remember on those team calls at 10 o'clock, I would be falling asleep on a team call. Well, it was probably 11.40. And I get a phone call from Mr. Moore. So when I saw the number, you know, I, I was in a dead sleep. I had to wake up real quick, like, yeah, I'm awake, I'm awake. Hey, Mr. Moore, T Tanisha, you ready to rock with me on the Midnight Madness? And I'm like, oh, to give a business overview. I had never given a business overview before. Now, I'm a one-star director. I've done webinars, but to give a verbal business overview, I hadn't done that. I was so nervous. I was freaking out. And I'm not going to tell my coach and mentor no. So I'm like, yeah, Mr. Moore, I'll, I'll be ready. He's like, don't worry about it. He's like, you know, I'm going to open it up and, you know, I'm going to throw the travel side to you or whatever. And he said to me, don't worry. If you mess it up, I'm going to clean it up. And so that made me feel a little bit better. And it's not that I didn't know the business. I'm a one-star director. I know the business. I, I know everything about it. But in that moment, I was just so nervous. But again, I had to fail my way forward. Now, after, you know, I made it through. I probably talked a little too much because I had the presentation slides in front of me because I didn't want to miss anything. But I did it, and now I, I can I can give a verbal overview in my sleep. But you have to do the thing that you're afraid of, and you get you get better at it. That's just an entrepreneur mindset. The employee mindset: Oh, I got to do it perfect, or I'm not going to do it at all. You will not make it an entrepreneur um the entrepreneurial world if your mindset is everything you got to do you got to do it perfect or you're not going to do it that that's just not how, how entrepreneurs work shamika um to me it's like cooking like trial and error right uh you may put too much seasoning in there you may not put enough seasoning on there right but you don't stop cooking because of that you just know what not to do the next time um and this kind of re reminded me of when I first started because I know I didn't know everything and I was I was okay with that and I was like okay whatever y'all gonna have me do I'm gonna just do it I'm gonna just go out there and so I remember my first three way call that I was doing for my coach and I'm like oh my gosh she want me to do a three way call Lord have mercy I'm not ready she's like yes she is ready I'm gonna put you out there. And I did a good job. She cleaned it up afterwards. She was like, okay, you know, if a person wants to talk about travel, let's give them travel. If they want to talk about this, talk about this. And, you know, once you start doing it, it just becomes easier and easier and easier. Um, and like you said, it's just feel the fear anyway. Um, 
and I always felt like I don't think it was lousy work, but I'd be like, okay, I got that done. <laughs> now let's move on to the next. Thing. Right, right. So, we ain't got harp on the lousy part. We just got to move forward. Exactly. So I can relate. Awesome, awesome. Anybody else want to speak on this? I learned, learned to put a message in the chat. She said, when I just started, I told Crystal that I don't know enough. I was in an uncomfortable space and I felt like I had to be properly set up with an office space and all the necessary tools before I could even approach anyone. That probably was just my dread of approaching or public speaking. It absolutely was. And, and, and Lorna, you probably wasted a whole lot of time um, where you could have been doing income producing activities you were just kind of, again, making up excuses, right? For not doing the thing you wanted to do. You, you got to just do it. You just do it. Let me tell you, this weekend, I was in Mexico and we went to the spa and we were going to do the hydrotherapy. So they have the whirlpool that has the hot, hot, hot water, right? With the bubbles and stuff. That was nice. And then they had the ice pool. So the whirlpool opens up your pores the ice pool closes your pores and then they had like one that was kind of like lukewarm so i love hot y'all know i had no problem getting in the hot tub right i had no problem with that and here come my bestie you got to get in the cold water now if y'all know me tanisha does not do cold at all but i wasn't gonna be punked <laughs> And not getting the cold. She said, all you got to do is just walk down the stairs and then walk out. And they tell you, don't stay more than a minute in this cold water because it is that cold. Okay. But I did it. I just, I just made up in my mind, I'm going to do it. And I walked down the stairs and I walked my butt right out real quick, but I did it. And that's the thing. And, and I'm telling you, there's no, if you want to build your posture, just do it. That's how you build your posture. You couldn't tell me nothing once I got out there. I'm like, Psh, that was nothing. I did, right? I had to ask myself, Tanisha, did you die? No, I did not die. So guess what? The next time I go, I'll do the same thing, right? You just got to do it. Step out there on faith. Your parachute does not open up until you jump. And some of you are afraid of jumping. But guess what? That's part of entrepreneurship. Do you know entrepreneurs are crazy? I'm going to prove it to you. Entrepreneurs will work 80 hours a week for themselves to avoid working 40 hours a week for somebody else. Real talk. So just do it, Lorna. It's been a minute since I did a three-way call. Last night I had a three-way call and I almost bundled it because my prospect got off the, the, um, the Zoom and said, oh, I only want to book travel. I'm not interested in building any network. And I said, okay, that's all I could think to say. I didn't even think to say, oh my God, you can absolutely do that if that's what you want to focus on. So luckily, Crystal said, oh, you can absolutely focus on just the travel, you know? And she cleaned it up for me. Mm -hmm. So exactly. that's what I, somebody said, clean it up. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, let's move on to number three. Entrepreneurs say no to opportunities employees embrace them. I'm going to repeat that. Entrepreneurs say no to opportunities. Employees embrace them. Warren Buffett said the difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. Entrepreneurs then flex their no muscle often to maintain their focus on what matters. Employees, on the other hand, say yes to everything because they fear that if they say no to an opportunity, they'll miss out on their big break. Mm. You know what comes to mind when I, hear, when I read that? I'm unrecruitable. You, I don't care what you got going on. Tanisha Burke is unrecruitable. There is nobody out there that could recruit me into their opportunity. It's not, I'm unrecruitable. So because I'm unrecruitable, 
that allows me to put all my focus on one thing and become the master of it. Some of y'all, y'all got 50 things going on. You win this, you do that. Oh, I do taxes. I also clean credit. I, I, I got my IntelliTravel business. I got my planet marketing business. I also have my online store, my boutique. I do lashes on the side. I drop. You got too much going on. That's an employee mindset. You, you think you, but here's what happens when you have a whole bunch of things going on. You make a little over here, a little over there, a little, and then it all amounts to still not enough. And the only thing you've done was put yourself in time debt. Again, employees say yes to all opportunities because they're afraid they're going to miss something. Entrepreneurs say no. They're going to focus on that one thing that matters. And they're just going to go hard in the paint for that. Anybody want to speak on that? Let's get some dialogue going. I, I want to speak on that. This is Beverly. Hey, Beverly. Oh, my goodness. Tanisha, Bark, you was reading my mail over here because I used to, that's what I used to do in everything. I was in everything. And you said I still, I was still was broke because I was not focused. But today I'm focusing on my travel. I'm in my, my building my planet business, mainly building my planet business, but the focus is there and I'm not coming off of it. And I've had some people call me. I, I get phone calls now with my insurance and stuff. And you know what I do? I tell them I'm not interested. And if they don't listen, I just go ahead and hang up the phone. Don't mean to be rude, but I just told you I was not interested in that because I realized if I don't stay in this one, if I stay on this one path, I am going to be successful. You heard what I said. I'm going to be successful. That's too much evidence yes. in this business. It's too much evidence. And from the time I had to leave my sub position to now, that was in March. We, my team and I are now DIT. We have done that since March. I've watched what has happened in those few months. So I said, if I just stay focused and keep going, and it's not easy, is it easy? No. But I, we can do this. I see it is coming up. So thank you, Tanisha, for that. I totally agree with you. Thank you so much. Well, Beverly, I have definitely seen uh, the 180 that you have done in your business. You know, I, I remember when we first met and you were just so unsure of yourself, but you kept at it. You kept at it. You kept at it. You kept asking questions, taking notes, bringing them to life. And man, you are a different person. So Congratulations on DIT. You definitely deserve it. And it, it's so evident seeing the work. You know what I'm saying? When you see the work, you're going to get the results. So everybody keep that in mind. Employers, employees say yes to all opportunities, but entrepreneurs say no. They focus on the one thing. So you may, you may be that person today who says, you know what? I got my, I got my finger in a lot of pots. And you may need to reevaluate and decide, okay, I need to take some things off of the table so that I could focus. Okay? Make that adjustment so that you could be successful. That might be the one thing that you need to do to change your whole business around. It's that you got so many things going on. Right? All right. Number four, entrepreneurs delegate. Employees practice DIY. Ooh, I'm gonna repeat that. Entrepreneurs delegate. Employees practice DIY. Entrepreneurs are always looking for ways to get things off their plate. They know the monetary value of their time and focus on the things only they can do. Employees are the opposite. They try to do everything themselves and see it as a weakness when they can't juggle it all. They try to know every single aspect of the business. The mantra, if you want it done right, do it yourself is the employee's mantra. Oh, how many of y'all are guilty of this? I, I know, just say out your amen. You trying to do everything. I remember, I think it was, I was already a one star. I think I was going for two star. 
And my husband, you know, he's in the business too. And I remember we had gotten the, the house, not this house, the house before. And he was saying how he wanted to get a, a lawnmower to, to mow the lawn. My mind said, we are entrepreneurs. No, we paying somebody to cut the grass. That time you spend in cutting the grass, you could be doing more income producing activities. So even back then I was looking to delegate stuff that other people could do. Could I cut the grass? Yeah, I'm not. I'd rather, I'd rather be prospecting and doing three-way calls. I'd rather be PS3. But I had, I had to help get his mind right because he's like no you know we could save money you know if i get the it was 25 dollars to pay the guy to cut the grass what we could have a 30 minute conversation with someone and make 50. how long is it going to take you to cut the grass right so again you have to think about what can i delegate some of you have children that are 15, 16, and you still doing all the cooking in the house. What? Give them each a night to be responsible for dinner for the house. Guess what? If it's grilled cheese at night, oh, well, it's grilled cheese. But didn't that just free you up of a few hours so that you could work your business? It's all about delegating. Anybody suffering from uh, the employee mindset on this, trying to juggle everything? No, but it makes me think about the prospects that I speak to. You know, um, you ask them, well, hey, how, you know, how's your business going? I know you got the boutique. They like, well, you know, I started something else and I'm doing this and I'm trying to get this together. And it's like, you called me at the wrong time, girl. I just started working on my business. <laughs> So it made me think about those prospects that have all those businesses and still need money. Yeah. So I I can totally relate to this. Just talking to people, other people who do their businesses. So yes, I can relate. I love that. Trey said, definitely me working on my own car to save money because I went to school for it, thinking I have to do it all. But nope. Let somebody else do that. You know what I say when when I um pay to have somebody else do something that I I really could do myself. I say I'm supporting small businesses. And it's true. Like I won't go to a car wash that requires me to vacuum out my own car. I ain't doing that. I will I will drive I drive around and find a full service where they will vacuum my car out. That's not a good use of my time. I want to just drive through because guess what while they vacuuming and stuff guess what i'm doing working my business anybody else want to speak on this who's guilty who else is guilty thank you trey for being honest but who else is guilty of this you trying to do everything instead of delegating trying to save money yes divorce said and you can write it off on your taxes exactly got to keep my car clean right all right, let's move on. Number five, entrepreneurs monotask, employees try to multitask. I'm gonna repeat that. Entrepreneurs monotask, employees try to multitask. There's no such thing as multitasking. Despite what employers want, this statement is true. Studies show it's impossible for our brains to focus effectively on more than one thing at a time. Entrepreneurs recognize that multitasking means doing nothing well, so they monotask instead. Employees, however, are trained to worship multitasking and beat themselves up when their brains won't cooperate. That one took me back. Because a lot of times, especially mothers, it's in our nature to multitask. We cooking and doing the laundry. <laughs> we, 
We doing homework and cleaning the house. It's like almost in our DNA to do more than one thing at a time because we have to, especially if you're a single mom and you don't have any help, everything falls on you. But you cannot bring that mindset to your business. This is why the calendar is so important. When you're supposed to be prospecting from three to six, just prospect. That's it. Don't be trying to prospect and work social media and do this and do that and you're creating flyers and you're working on a quote. Focus on one thing. So schedule everything that needs to get done. And when it's time to do that thing, just do that thing. I have some time. I'm, I'm going through the whole process of reading the Bible for the whole year. And I do the, the listening because if I try to read it, I, I it just doesn't help me. But I listen. And if I do it when I'm driving, it's even better because I'm just focused. But sometimes if I try to listen to the Bible while I'm sitting at my desk, I start trying to do other things and I totally miss everything they said. So I, I realized for me, I can't do that because I'm I'm by nature trying to multitask. I'm like, oh, while I'm listening to the Bible, I could also be checking my email. And I'm missing everything. I don't know what the scripture said. So, right, I have to, I had to learn to not do that. Anybody want to speak on that? Am I the only one? It's a habit to try to multitask. You are not the only one. I, I have to tell myself sometimes because I start doing something like, okay, let me write these people on my list. And then next thing I know, I'm strolling on Facebook looking at a post and I have to tell myself, Shamika, nope, what were you just doing? Let's finish this first. And then let's go to this. But like you said, though, it's like with women, we just multitask. Anyway, you got your baby on your hip. You talking with your sister on the phone. You just put the chicken in the oven. You read, reading the book real quick. So <laughs> I can definitely relate. But I do like what um, J.P. Watkins said. When you focus on something, finish one course until successful. And then you move on to the next thing. So it's hard because I still have to do it myself. I still got to remind myself. Okay, Shamika, what you supposed to be doing? <laughs> so right. it's hard, but it's definitely durable. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And this also goes with people who, let's say you're not good at a certain app or something like Canva, right? You've had Canva, but you haven't done anything with it because you don't know how to use it, right? Block some time aside to watch a couple of YouTube videos on how to work Canva. Just, just, just take 30 minutes and put that time in to learn it because then you're not frustrated when you need to put out something and now you're trying to post, you're trying to learn and post at the same time. It's like, take some time to do the things that you need to do. And it'll it's going to help you save time in the end, right? Uh, and I, you guys heard me say this before, I, one of my college roommates, um wanted to go to disney she wanted to book a disney trip i live here in florida but i'm not a big disney fan so i didn't know have i been to the parks before yeah a couple of times but um, it's just not my thing but man before i booked that trip i said let me go on and get my disney certification let me just get it out the way i had to block a whole a day and a half to just focus on just completing the Disney certification. Cause it took a good, probably 14, 16 hours to get it done, right? But it was such a, a better experience for me booking her Disney trip because I took the time to get the certification, right? So that is just so important. Let's go on to number six. Hold on one second, it is raining outside. All right, number six, entrepreneurs thrive on risk. Employees avoid it. I'm gonna repeat that. Entrepreneurs thrive on risk. Employees avoid it. 
If you ask many people in the employee mindset why they won't start a business, they'll say they need the security of their day jobs. Not having access to a pension, steady paycheck, or health insurance is too risky, they say. Yet entrepreneurs thrive on risk. Without risk, there's no reward. And rather than scaring entrepreneurs away, this knowledge invigorates them. As Peter Drucker said, whenever you see a successful business, someone once made a courageous decision. You got to be willing to take a risk. You got to be willing to take that risk. Right? What was our risk here? What did it cost us? 200 bucks. 200 bucks to start this business. And, and when I think about it, was it even a risk really? Because we got so much more than what we paid for. So much more. $200 to position ourselves to earn eight streams of income? Where's the risk? 30 day money back guarantee? Where's the risk? Risk free profit guarantee? Where's the risk? Best travel price guarantee? Where's the risk? $20 to planet marketing to earn seven streams of income? What? Where's the risk? Some people just won't. And here's, here's what I don't understand with a lot of people. And this is just something to kind of keep in mind when you're prospecting. We're not asking them to, to quit their job. I would say at least 95% of the people who do this business do it part time. So keep that in mind when you're talking to people who are afraid to take risk, just let them know this is not quit your job. This is something you're gonna do on the side. Do what you do from nine to five to help build somebody else's dream. That's all good. But from five to nine, let's let's work on you going after your dreams, your personal goals. Anybody wanna speak on this? Terrence referenced the book, The Power of Focus by Jack Canfield. Great book. You struggle with focusing, that is a great book. All right, number seven, entrepreneurs believe in seasons. Employees believe in balance. I know I'm gonna step on some toes with this one, Director Green. Mm-hmm, yep, is she still on? I know I saw her. All right, still on. okay, listen. Yeah. Entrepreneurs believe in seasons. Employees believe in balance. Ah, work-life balance. That is every employee's most coveted dream, the most sought after treasure. But entrepreneurs know that balance isn't achievable. Instead of seeking balance, they believe that to excel in one area of their lives, others will suffer. They accept that the areas of their lives rotate through seasons. Instead of fighting for an unachievable balance, they recognize that one thing will always have to take precedence over the other. There is no such thing as balance when you are fighting for your financial freedom. Ladies, moms, Sometimes you're going to be an A CEO and a D mother. Get over it. There's going to be other times you are an A mom and a C wife. Get over it. It is what it is. There's no balance. Write this down, y'all. If you're taking notes, there is no such thing as balance. It does not exist. It's a unicorn. It's a leprechaun. No such thing as balance. You have to, you only got 24 hours in a day. You have to prioritize. And I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. Last convention, Mr. and Mrs. Bradley had a, a training called the agreement. And Mr. Bradley said in his household, it's God family business. And I turned to my husband, I said, that ain't gonna work with women. 
we got to say God business family or else because we're so used to giving everything to everybody we don't leave nothing for ourselves and that will include the business so yes there are going to be times ladies fathers that you need to put the business ahead of your family not forever not forever before season you going for director right beverly's dit right now for this next season family gotta come second it's not forever just for a season okay you might miss all of your kids games and competitions for this season but if you make that sacrifice and get to your next level, guess what? The next season, you'll be able to not have to miss any of their games or competitions. But you gotta be willing to give up something in order to get something. There's no such thing as balance. It'll go back to you doing a little over here, a little over there, a little over here, a little over there, trying to balance, and you've accomplished nothing. You will not accomplish anything with that mindset. Shamika? This is good. Um, I wanted to say, you know, with the seasons, it's kind of like a marriage, right? Marriages and relationships, they go through their season. In the summer, y'all may be, you know, in bliss, you know, in the fall, y'all may not even want to look at each other, right? So it's kind of like a marriage, they go through seasons. But then also when I hear people say, you know, I need to find balance, I find that they never start and they procrastinate mm -hmm. often. When they say, well, I need, I'm trying to find me some balance. I, I had to tell one of my business partners that I said, if you're looking for balance, then you ain't going to never start. Because I've been in business for I don't know how long, and I still I still don't have balance. I ain't looking for it no more because it's not there. I have some days, like you said, I may be an A-plus mama. I may be a B-plus entrepreneur. Some days I may be a D-mama. And mm -hmm. then I may, <laughs> you know, it just fluctuates. It goes through. So I had to accept that. And really, um, what Mr. Moore used to say all the time, it really hit me different this time around, I guess, because I'm in a, another season. But when he said, you know, embracing your process, I think it's part of that. You know, you have to, whatever season you're in, season of sacrifice, season of separation, season of, uh, uh, you know, of abundance, winning or whatever. So um, this was just, this was right on point here. Um, it just made me think about those people that say, well, you know, how do you find balance? Or I need to find balance. It's like, no, there is no balance. You just need to go for it. Exactly. Stop trying to make everything match up and be even. You just have to do what you got to do. Right. So, yeah. Exactly. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Divorce. And I just want to add, honey, the one the, the number one income earner said it. She was like, there is no balance. You just have to you, you just have to get it in when you can. Sometimes you're an A plus mom. Sometimes she's, you know, sometimes you're not. You know what I mean? She just kind of works it around, but she because her goal is would be successful. She made it, but she knows there is no balance. And she had to let her family know she got the buy-in from that. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, let your family know what you're doing, but also let them know what the reward will be, you know, by supporting you and allowing you to do it, right? You might have to tell your son, this basketball season, I'm not going to make it to any of your games, right? However, next year we going on a cruise so we can have that family time together. I think they'll be okay with that. Okay, mom screaming and yelling at my game like she ain't got no sense <laughs> versus the cruise next year. I think I'll take the cruise, right? At the time, your kids don't even want you at the game because you're embarrassing them in the stands, right? <laughs> Director Green, you want to speak on this? Are you in a position you can speak? Anybody want to speak on seasons? Rhonda. Yeah. Hi, hello everyone. Yes, um, yes, there's there are seasons for everything. And I, I believe we can do a combination because as much as we know that our children will you know love to go on a cruise or or go, you know, to Putacana or wherever, um, I think that is imperative for us to show up at their games. They're gonna remember that as well. So if we can do a you know combination. While we're there, we may step out to make a call. We may text while we're at the game. 
to ensure that we keep that connection going. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm accustomed to doing it, a combination where I've been at my daughter's, you know, events, and yet I've been, you know, uh, utilizing technology while I'm there. So that's, that's my take on it. You can that. absolutely do that. You can absolutely mm -hmm. do that. But I would say this, and this was, and this is just something I personally have experienced. Okay. Yes. When you have your phone, you, you can always work your business no matter where you are. But what I found was I found myself constantly working the business and wasn't present in the moment for whatever I was supposed to be doing. That was my situation. So meaning, you know, if, if my son has a baseball game, right. Um, and the whole time I'm in the stand, I'm on Facebook and I'm texting and stuff like that. I really missed the game because I'm not even paying attention to him. Same thing with, okay. If we say we got to have, you know, uh, family, family night, whether we're going out to dinner or we're going to a movie or we're going to do something together. Yes. Could I be on my phone also, you know, still working a business? Yeah. But I'm missing the moment of being present with my family. And so for me, this is me personally, y'all may be different. You can, you can do that. But I found that if I don't take the time to do the thing that I'm scheduled to do at that time, if it's time for me to be with my husband, I need to put my phone down. If it's time for me to spend some time with my son, I need to put my phone down. Because for me, someone who's a, I beat, I bleed planet blue and orange, I, it's very difficult for me to turn off my business switch. Very, very, I have to work at that because the the business will will take it just takes over it's part of who i am it's i can do it in my sleep i'm comfortable doing it i love doing it but i have to when i'm having time to do other things that are scheduled whether it's spending time with my mom or whatever or my family i need to be present and if i have my phone i'm not gonna be present i'm gonna be on my phone posting or prospecting or whatever when I should be spending that time. And I just don't want, I don't want to regret. None of us, right, family, friends, we all got an expiration date. We don't know how long any of us are going to be here. I don't want to regret not spending that quality time because I was working my business. That's just my situation. Anybody in that boat with me? where nope i gotta focus on one thing because trying to do both i'm right there with you <laughs> I'm right there okay with talk you. about it shamika um i have to do that too because i literally go to sleep with planet on my mind i wake up with planet on my mind i'm outside i'm thinking about prospecting i mean when we going out to eat, I'm like, we driving. I'm like, oh, I've got to go back over there. That's content. I need to take a picture. Like everything <laughs> is about the business. So when you are in that moment with your kids, like being at my daughter's graduation, right? That's a, that's a huge moment. I had to put my phone down, you know, and be there in the moment, you know, be excited with her instead of just saying, okay, well, I'm at her graduation. Let me go ahead. I got 10 minutes real quick and let me prospect because that's something that I would do. So <laughs> I'm right. right there with you. You got to put your phone down, even even when it comes to traveling. I know we like the content or whatever, but, you know, it's it's good to unplug for a hot second and just be in the moment. Look at the trees and the scenery around you, you know, hold your husband's hand, give him a hug or, you know, talk a little bit. So I'm right there with you. I do have to turn it off sometimes because it could take over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but That was a good example that you gave because, like, I still haven't posted all my trips, all my pictures from the Mexico trip, right? Why? Because I didn't want to spend the whole time getting content and then spend the rest of the time putting it out there. I wanted to be able to enjoy Mexico, right? I'm like, I can post those pictures anytime, right? But if I was constantly, it, I'm telling you, it will take over. It's different 
let me say this it's different when you're in planet marketing versus planet marketing being in you when it's in you it is very difficult to turn it off stephanie and then Rhonda. okay thank you stephanie you know, I, I truly believe in, do you hear me? Yes. I believe in short-term sacrifice for long-term success. And my kids know that. So if I'm not present when they want me to be present, they know this because there's something good going to come later. So short-term sacrifice for long-term success is my model. So I don't get caught up in the guilt trip. Right. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Rhonda, thank you. Okay, so I want to clarify, I, you, you mentioned a game or an event, things of that nature. I was specifically saying that. No, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that we don't um, spend time or quality time with our family without that being there. I'm saying when I have a moment and I'm able to be at an event and knowing that I can send a few texts at that time to get that out, my, that out the door or get it done or whatever, no, I'm big on making sure because I believe that those moments, as you shared, we don't know when we're going to be called home. Right. So we want to make sure that we have that quality time, but also let them know that, as you stated, communicate and articulate and have those family meetings and saying, hey, this is what mommy's doing. This is what we're doing for us. But I was making reference to you saying at events. Yes. Not specific, not saying, you know, other. Yes, and I know, do what you do time. too, Rhonda. There, there's yeah. been times that I've been invited to something and I'm like, okay, but I'm gonna have to step out because I got this three-way coming up, but I don't want to turn down the event, but just know that. So I'm I'm right there with you, Rhonda. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I want to clarify that. Yeah, no, I got you. I'm picking up <laughs> what right. you're putting down, sis. <laughs> there you go. All right, last one, number eight. Number eight, employees are threatened by smarter people. Entrepreneurs hire them. I'm going to repeat that. Employees are threatened by smarter people. Entrepreneurs hire them. In the corporate jungle, it's survival of the fittest. If you're not the smartest, most well-connected, or hardest working person in your department, you're stuck at the bottom rung of the ladder. Employees, therefore, are threatened by those who are smarter than they. They view the smarter guys as competition. Entrepreneurs hire those people. They know that without a great team, their business will fail, so they hire up. In our language, it would be recruit up. Recruit the people that are smarter than you, have a bigger network than you, that you know are more successful than you. Recruit up. We always say go for the high hanging fruit. So that that's the twist with what we do. Don't go for the low hanging fruit. Always recruit up, right? The people that you look up to. You don't have to be a startup CEO or even own your own business to be an entrepreneur, but the entrepreneurial mindset is one that attracts success. And the really good news is that there are many different ways in which you can apply these mindsets to become successful at whatever you choose to do in your career. So always recruit up, um, always have that entrepreneurial mindset. We always say network marketing is a personal development program with a compensation plan attached. Right. So as you improve, as you improve your mindset, as you read more, as you study more, as you surround yourself with other successful people that you're just going to attract the right people who want exactly what you have. So any closing comments? Was this beneficial for anyone? Anybody want to share their takeaway from this? Their biggest takeaway? Let's get three takeaways. I'll go. Um, my biggest takeaway is to um, excel in one area. Um, you know, others are going to suffer. Mm -hmm. You just have to come to term, terms with that and understand that it's just a season. It's not forever. Exactly. Anybody else? Who wants to share their takeaway? Uh, Lorna said, absolutely, feel the fear and do it anyway. Feel the fear and do it anyway. That's good, Lorna. Anybody else? 
One more takeaway. Believe in the seasons. The seasons. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that one's going to help a lot of people, Ebony. <laughs> that everything happens in seasons. All right, well, this concludes virtual coffee break with Tanisha. Again, this is streaming in the Team Lux Platinum group. And then by the end of the day, I will also have it uploaded to my Lifestyle by Tanisha YouTube channel. So everyone have an amazing day. See you next time.